All right. Hello, everybody. We've got a big crowd joining us today for this very popular webinar. Everyone is excited to come and see inventory. Uh, I'm Leah College, the director of Real Wealth Realty, and I've got a lot of the Real Wealth team with us here today. Of course, of course, uh, Joe Torrey, uh, my fellow investment counselor here at Real Wealth, he's here. Celia Christensen is usually behind the scenes on all of these <laughs> webinars. She's our marketing manager. She's joining us today. And then Grant and Rebecca Anderson, our property team managers. Um, they oversee our relationships with property teams. Uh, they're our mobile uh, team living in their RV and visiting all the different markets that we have property teams in and finding new relationships for real wealth. So we've asked them to join as well. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> So this is a really special webinar. We had this idea um, a couple weeks ago to really highlight some of the best deals from our teams. We know that a lot of investors are feeling that end of year pressure to identify um, properties they want to close on before the end of the year. So we reached out to all 15 of our property teams and asked them to send us their very best deal, their favorite property from their inventory, throw in whatever perks, whatever concessions, anything to sweeten the deal for our investors. Um, 10 of our teams sent back some inventory. And those of us on the call here are all investors with varying experience levels. We all cherry picked our favorites from that list of 10 deals. So today we are going to um, get you access to those 10 special deals and also share with you the ones we picked um, and why we picked them. We're gonna let you kind of jump into our thought process when it comes to analyzing deals. So this should be really fun. Um, thank you so much for joining us live. If this is your first time joining us live on one of these webinars, the best part about it is that you can interact with us. So feel free to po pop open the question panel there on the GoToWebinar control panel and send in your questions or comments. Uh, we will have a designated Q&A session at the end as we talk about some of these deals. Um, this is our standard disclaimer here at Real Wealth. Um, so while Grant and Rebecca uh, do an incredible job screening and reviewing the processes of all of our property teams, uh, we of course can't guarantee the performance of the investments that are offered by these companies and the performance of the team themselves. Um, if you're planning on purchasing a property through any real wealth team, you have to remain in control of your own due diligence. Uh, we've put together a great investor checklist to kind of guide you through some of those important due diligence steps. On there, you'll find these next two items. Always order a home inspection, uh, even if the property is brand new, even if the property has just been recently inspected. Order an appraisal. We don't recommend you overpay for a property. Um, I like to say we streamline this process. We connect you to some awesome people that are that have great track records with us and with other investors, um, but we don't remove the risks. Still investing, so you've got to definitely remain in control of your due diligence. Okay, so as I mentioned, 10 teams sent us their very best deals. Um, all of them can close by the end of the year. I think there might have been one or two um, that close in early 2025, but for the most part, all of them could close by the end of the year. Uh, again, we asked them to throw in their best concessions, anything that they could do to sweeten the deal uh, since it is year end. And then the five of us independently conducted some initial due diligence. And we did this uh, free market style where you know we got all the deals at once. One of our, our team members entered them all in uh, to deal check for us. And then it was a ready, set, go approach. And it was first come, first serve. So um, in, in true Joe fashion, he was the absolute first to, to put dibs on a specific property. <laughs> Um, but we feel like that's kind of the fun of it, right? It, that's how the, the housing market works, right? The first one to, to jump on the deal gets it. And so um, that was kind of the, the uh, fashion that we followed it here today. If you scan this QR code that you see at the bottom, you can see the full list of all 10 properties that were sent to us. So we're only going to feature four deals, our favorite four today, but all 10 are listed up there for you so that you can check them out and maybe... Uh, one of these four deals will um, appeal to you and you'll want to reserve one of them. Again, all these deals are currently available. Okay. So real quick, I want to highlight some of the benefits of working with Real Wealth and purchasing through Real Wealth property teams. Um, I mentioned earlier, we simplify the real estate investing process by connecting you with some of the best operators in the country. 
um, so that you can invest confidently and most importantly, more passively. Uh, it's a full-time job for us here at Real Wealth to research these markets, to vet these teams, to manage the relationships, to make sure that the deals are actually good deals. Um, and we know that you're busy professionals. You have your own full-time job. So you get to leverage, you get to outsource, if you will, some of that vetting and some of that due diligence initially um, that Real Wealth does on your behalf. So these are just three, I think, of the core advantages that you get by investing through Real Wealth. You get access to our vetted teams. Um, Grant, Rebecca, do you guys real briefly want to touch on some of just the quick high points of what you look for in vetting a team? Like what are some of your core things that you're looking for in vetting a team? Sure. Yeah, we uh, one of the first things we do when we get a, when we start talking to somebody, we ask them for a pro forma. Uh, so we want to just make sure at first that if they they are at least cash flowing, um, it, yeah, bre breaking even if not cash flowing as well. Then we also do dig deeper into the market itself. What's the population, job growth? Uh, what's the future kind of look like? We dive into the team themselves, do a background on the team, and dive into how they they have property management and all of that. And then there's also the quality of the properties themselves. If they're a rehab property, we look at the rehab that gets done and the new construction, what quality level are they working with? Because there is a variety yeah. there. And the neighborhoods that they're in. We don't want to send any real wealth investors to really challenging areas we are more about the neighborhoods where everyone's going to feel safe and so those are some of the things that we look for i think that's just like a high level yep awesome and and again grant and rebecca are mobile so they live full-time in their rv uh they're visiting family at the moment we at the start of the call we all commented that how interesting it is to see them in an actual house because they're always in their <laughs> rv <laughs> Um, but that means they get to be mobile. So they do they do site visits um, and go visit all these markets in person. So even just last week, they hit three three different markets and new perspective teams. So um, it's great to have their expertise and you'll, and you'll get to know a little bit more about their investing background um, in just a couple minutes. Um, track record is the second advantage. I mean, many of the teams that we work with now at Real Wealth, we've worked with for almost a decade. So some of them have sold many hundreds of properties to Real Wealth investors over the years. So while past performance isn't a guarantee of future results, it, it is a good indicator of the way things are likely to go. Um, and certainly we've been witness to conflict resolution. Uh, we've seen them handle the challenges. We've seen them grow and change their businesses to really offer good services um, to investors. So you get to, you get to kind of jump in uh, and take advantage of that track record. And then leverage. You're part of Real Wealth, so you are part of a much larger collective. Uh, if you were a one-off investor trying to form a new relationship in a market and trying to negotiate certain concessions or negotiate certain favors, if you will, it might be more difficult. Um, but when you're a part of Real Wealth, they see you as part of this much larger volume of investors. And so they are more incentivized to throw in more concessions and to be a little more understanding of some of your circumstances. Um, and I, I always mention, you know, while we can't strong arm a team because they are independent companies from us, we don't own them. Uh, we, we can influence them in many cases. Um, and, and we have in the past, uh, again, we can't always force the outcomes that you want, but we will try, um, especially if we feel like an error has been made, um, that they need to rectify. So these are three of the core advantages that you get when you invest through real wealth. Okay, Joe, you want to touch real briefly on how we select our markets at Real Wealth? Okay, uh, so here are some of the criteria we look at uh, economic information to decide what market to even investigate. We look for job growth, we look for population growth, and those two aren't always the same. Sometimes you can have population growth without job growth, like certain areas in Florida where there's large retirement communities. The population's growing up growing very quickly but the jobs aren't as quickly because retirees don't need jobs so that's why you have to track both uh, we also look for affordability we can't be in san francisco or manhattan because the numbers just wouldn't work you know, they need to be affordable and healthy rent to value ratios are tied to that in other words the rent is high enough to cover your principal interest taxes insurance and property management so you have positive cash flow or at least break even cash flow 
And then we also look for states or cities that are landlord friendly. And by that we mean uh, it's not hard to evict somebody if they're not paying their rent. Uh, there's no rent control initiatives on the ballot every, every election cycle. So just places where it's uh, good to do business. And once we identify a good market, then Grant and Rebecca get in their RV and go start making site visits and uh, uh, talking to the players, looking for the property teams, home builders, uh, turnkey providers, property management companies, and vetting them. Awesome. So you see, we're in a lot of different markets across the country. It can get very challenging for investors sometimes to know where to start and we talk a lot in our education about investor preferences right how what are you as an investor looking for and what risk tolerances do you come to the table with um, all of these things are valid and they make different markets more optimum for different investors and different properties more optimum for different investors so it's part of what we wanted to do today was demonstrate to you guys that we are all investors ourselves, all at different levels, all with different preferences, all with different risk tolerances. And so we take it again, taking a look at the full list, we all had different choices of, of what we wanted to buy. So again, we're gonna let you jump in um, to our thought process on some of that. Um, hey, I see, I see Sandy and Stephanie are joining us live on the webinar. Sandy, Stephanie, it's good to see you guys. They were on the tour with us this past weekend in San Antonio. Thank Hello. you guys for joining. Okay, so as I mentioned, Joe was Joe was the quickest one to the table to to select the deal. So Joe, tell us a little bit about your um, your vantage point when selecting a property. Okay, so just by way of background, I've been an investment counselor here at Real Wealth since 2016, and I've been investing in real estate since 2004. I was buying houses in Phoenix back then. I'm kind of conservative as an investor. Uh, I prefer a mix of cash flow and appreciation properties. So half of my portfolio is in Alabama, which is for cash flow. Those are renovated homes. And then the other half is in Florida, which is for appreciation, which are mostly new construction. So it's uh, I like the balance because even if I have a a, um, a vacancy or two, uh, I, I still have enough cash flow coming in from Alabama to cover everything. So as a conservative investor, that's the way I like to do it. It's, it's kind of like having a balanced portfolio of stocks and bonds or uh, growth stocks and dividend paying stocks. So I just like to keep it half and half like that. All right. So the one I selected was this property in Port Charlotte, Florida, uh, through our Jacksonville team. So you can see the basic vital statistics there. It's 369. Uh, it's renting for 1995. It's a single family home in Port Charlotte, 16, 17 square feet, four bedrooms, two baths. And you can see the uh, where it's right above where it says Rotunda is the location of the property. It's like 10 minutes from the beach. So some highlights. Uh, it's already rented at 1995. The uh, local team is throwing in two years of free property management to help with your cash flow. It's got a modern floor plan, uh, open floor plan. It's got a great school district and a very established neighborhood. And as I mentioned, it was 10 minutes to uh, world-class beaches. If you've ever been in the west coast of Florida, the beaches there are just really beautiful. Blue water, blue skies, powdery sand beaches, much nicer than the east coast, although they're both good. And uh, the builder is offering incentive. Uh, you can uh, buy down your interest rate, uh, as we'll see in the next slide, but that's, uh, that's going to change on Monday. So if you're interested in this property, you should move quickly tomorrow or the, over the weekend. All right, next slide. All right, here are some basic numbers. Uh, purchase price 369. With the down payment and purchase costs, you'll need about 107 to get into this property. So some key numbers to look at. <clears throat> First things I look at is the numbers. The, grant, the rent is 1995, and that's not a projection. That's a real number because they have tenants in place. What's really great is the principal and interest is 1285 a month with that 3.75 interest rate. That's like three percentage points lower than the going rate. It's like setting the clock back two years. A lot of our investors uh, feel like they missed a boat. I should have bought two years ago when interest rates were 3.75. Well, you can do that. You just buy down the rate. So the interest, the uh, principal and interest is only 12.85 a month for a brand new house. Also, take a look at the insurance. It's only $116 a month. Everybody, uh, as soon as they hear Florida, they think about hurricanes. But uh, the brand new construction homes in Florida have to conform to modern code, building code. They have to be able to withstand 120 mile an hour winds. So they're very solid, 
uh, uh, slab construction, uh, cinder blocks, reinforced roofs. So the insurance companies don't see a whole lot of risk to these kinds of properties and the insurance premiums aren't that high. And, and also we don't invest in flood zones. And then the next line, uh, I'd like to point your attention to the property management. As I mentioned earlier, the local team is offering two years of free property management. So that saves you about $150, $160 a month that uh, goes to your cash flow. Now on year three, when the uh, property management kicks in, you'll have more uh, more than enough cash flow because rents go up over time to uh, still be positive with positive cash flow on this property. But the main advantage of it is that this is an area that's going to appreciate. So uh, you're just placing your bets, planting the seed, and letting the property pay for itself while it's appreciating. So if we go to the next slide, I have some things that I look for in particular. So things I like about this, one, the area. Port Charlotte is part of the Punta Gorda MSA, the Metropolitan Statistical Area. And it, my research shows that it's the fifth fastest growing MSA in the country. And you can see the link down there where it shows you the uh, um, backup for that. So uh, Punta Gorda is over there on the right, Port Charlotte's just north and west of there. So this whole MSA is the fifth fastest growing uh, in the country. There's 387 MSAs in the United States, and this is number five. So I like growth. When the population's growing, that means it's easier to find tenants. It means uh, uh, demand for housing's going up, so rents go up and property values go up. So that's the kind of place I want to be. Second thing I like about this is the property itself. As mentioned, it's brand new construction, uh, four bedroom, two bath. I like four bedrooms because four bedrooms attract white collar professionals as tenants. Uh, white collar professionals tend to like four bedrooms because they want a, a home office. That's not to say a three bedroom house won't appreciate too, but uh, the four bedroom attracts the kind of professionals I like to rent to. Uh, the, the other thing, uh, the next thing, uh, is the financing. As I mentioned, uh, you as the buyer can pay 1.25% points to get that 3.75% financing. So you can get a brand new $369,000 property with a mortgage payment of only $1,285. So that's, that's a great deal. So caveats, uh, we already talked about hurricanes, uh, but uh, the one thing that would give me some pause here, uh, maybe some reservation is this time of year, it's harder to find tenants like Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, around the holidays. Not as many people move that time of year. So that would be one reservation I might have had, but this property already has a tenant in it at 1995. So that removes my vacancy risk and uh, the property cash flows from day one. So all in all, I like this property for, for the appreciation part of my portfolio. If I had 100K laying around that I needed to put to work, uh, this would be a good addition to the uh, appreciation side of my portfolio. Yeah, definitely. I like, I like the fact okay. that they, oh yeah, I like the fact that it is already rented out. You know, that's definitely takes out some risk. And like you said, that's cash flow from day one. You don't have to worry about, you know, any any delays or anything like that and getting um tenant in there. So yeah, I was going to point out the 3.75% interest rate is super appealing. That's the lowest interest rate I think that we have right now across all of the teams, even those that are doing these aggressive buy downs in the threes. That's that gets my attention. <laughs> all right. Any other thoughts on this one? I, I actually personally own a couple properties in Northport that I've owned for a couple years now. And I have been very pleased with this area of Southwest Florida. I know a lot of people get nervous because the last couple hurricanes have come straight through this area. Um, but I'm thrilled to say I haven't had any damage to my properties in the years that I've owned them. And there have been some massive hurricanes in that time period. Um, again, to Joe's point, one of the benefits of buying new construction, um, they, they can withstand those strong winds and storm damage. And we're far from flood zones, so that, that helps too. All right. Shall we go on to the next one? Yeah. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, Grant and Rebecca. Yeah. So we started investing in 2001 in, in Sacramento, California. We started buying some rentals. Uh, we did some wholesaling. We did some flips. Uh, then we started to do some 1031 exchanges and we sold all of our properties in, in Sacramento and bought in Indianapolis. That's where our portfolio of rental properties are now. We still currently do some flips and we own quite a few rental properties in Indianapolis. 
Uh, we like the, the ones that are outside of the 465 loop, if you're familiar with Indianapolis. Yeah, so the kind of properties that we like and what we look for are instant equity where we can in, or where we can increase the value. So that is, you know, one of the things that we love to see, positive cash flow, ones that we could put the least amount of cash into the property. And um, like he said, if they're kind of surrounding the metro, we like them built a little bit like in the 70s or later, at least three bedrooms, two baths. So these are just some basic buy box that we end up looking for, which leads us to the one we chose yeah. on the next one, I suppose. So we chose the property in Chattanooga from the Chattanooga team. It's actually in Rossville, Georgia, which is about 15 miles. Minutes. Or 15, so sorry. Close. 15 minutes south of Just a few miles of downtown. Rossville. Yeah, so it's really close to Chattanooga. So you're getting kind of the benefit of the Chattanooga. It is a single family. It's a four bedroom, three bath. It's completely re remodeled house. Now, we did compare quite a few of the properties when we saw the list. We didn't yeah. immediately jump on one right away. One of the other strong contenders was the one with the Charlotte team in Kings Mountain. That was a duplex. We liked so many things about it, but ultimately for us, we kind of ended up preferring single families yeah. versus duplexes. That ended up being like the tipping point. And this property offers an immediately immediate forty thousand in equity. The uh, what was the estimated value is yeah. two seventy, and he's offering it for two forty, and there that was a huge factor, obviously. Yeah, and he's doing a lot of work to the property. It's fully updated. They're putting in a brand new kitchen, new appliances, new flooring paint interior and exterior, all new um, fixtures throughout the house, brand new windows, roof, new roof, new AC, new, new, AC, uh, new water heater, updated plumbing, and doing some grading on the outside to make sure that there's no standing water. So it's basically kind of like a new construction. I mean, we shouldn't have to worry about anything for a while with that property, right? You're, everything is going to be updated. And with this team, they we asked for the scope of work, and they sent it in a very easy to understand checklist. So we really appreciated that clarity yeah. of what was being offered. And we already mentioned it's really close to Chattanooga. It is a transitioning neighborhood, but nothing too scary based on our research, yeah. which was important to us, which we can go into when we get to that um, later slide. Um, but regarding the numbers, we can go on to the next one. Go ahead. Yeah, so the purchase price, you know, 240. This one is obviously a little bit higher interest rate. They they're not really buying it down like some of the other new construction teams, but I feel like at a lower purchase price, the interest rate the that little bit higher interest rate doesn't really affect that principal and interest payment since it's a, a little bit lower. Uh rents are at 1795. We'll go into what we looked at, what the rents could be. Um, and I think that's a conservative number from them. Taxes are pretty low because they are in Georgia and insurance is still a reasonable amount for the area. Um, you know, if you look at the year one cash flow, you're sitting at like six thousand dollars. So that's that's pretty good. And, you know, we really like the cash on cash return and the cap rate, you know, being in the eights. That's definitely a, a, a positive for this property. And I don't know if we mentioned on the last one with this property, they are offering the free property management for the first year. So that is reflected here too. So that just helps with first year numbers. So we all know that the returns start to come in the later yeah. years as well. Yeah. So we can go to the next one. So we uh, had already just re researched the yeah, market we did. <laughs> earlier this year when we brought on the team. So we already knew that it was one that we're really interested in with job opportunities manufacturing, logistics, tech, health, tech and healthcare. But we did go ahead and use the niche.com zip code uh, review for Rossville itself. It gives it an overall B minus, which is fine. And cost of living and outdoor activities at A minus, which we remember when we went to Chattanooga, 
it is beautiful and it is yeah. very well known for rock climbing and hiking and uh, kayaking and all these really amazing outdoor activities that they get to do almost all year yeah. round. And so that's definitely um, a plus that we saw firsthand for people who love to live in this area with the housing and the public schools in the B category as well. Yeah, so we also looked on Zillow, we looked through some of the sold properties that they had in the Rossville area, and the median four bedroom price is 270, and obviously we know it's a median price, so it's probably gonna be a little bit higher than that because of all the work that they're doing to that property. So that's how we came up with the $40,000 worth of equity that could be in this property once you purchase it. Uh, the average rents in in Rossville are six, between 1,600 and 2,000. And I looked at Rentcast, which is one of the, the, it's a sister company of DealCheck that we use quite a bit to find out, you know, how property teams are doing and whether or not their rents are, are you know, applicable. And this is the 1920, that's what it should be renting for. The Performa is 1795, so, it should even in a Christmas time and Thanksgiving time, it should rent out fairly fast at a 17.95 uh, rent, and then hopefully, you know, the next year you can raise the rents a little bit, or there is some some wiggle room. Maybe you start at 19.20 if you're willing to to wait a little bit, uh, but there is some some playroom in that it looks like, and then we drove street view up and down the street and you could tell that there the area was a little bit rough and, and it was transitioning so we did bring that up to the property team and they said they have a new build that they're building across the street they agreed that basically yeah it is a transitioning area but they are going to be doing a new build across the street they're trying to buy some other houses that are down the street that that are a little bit dilapidated. So you could you basically you could be getting one at a little bit lower price that could have that appreciation due to other things going on in that neighborhood. So it it really does look like a a good deal for us. Um, that's the way I would look at it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I love that you called them and got the scoop on that because this honestly was one that I was really tempted by too. Um, cause I watched the video that the team posted. He did a walkthrough video of it, uh, and talked through, it was, it's gutted right now. I mean, they're, they're totally redoing this house, like they said, but I loved that they were converting that lower level to like a full on master suite down there. And then the $40,000 of instant equity, like this one was super appealing to me. But when I did the Google street view, I had the same thought. I was like, oh man, the street looks like it's kind of transitioning. So pro tip, you call the team and you find out <laughs> that that's they're holding they something across the street. And that's what they're there for. They are the boots on the ground. They are the people that um, know the area, know what's going on. So that's why I reached out to them. Yeah, and when I do remember when we visited, one of the houses on uh, <laughs> the whole street, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm talking to the owner there. Yeah, I'm talking to the owner over there. Yeah. And their other neighbors come and tell him like, oh yeah, this neighbor wants to sell. So he's becoming relationships with the people on the street in order to see who you know needs help with selling and who you know he can buy from. So that was just one example, and here he's doing it again on a different street. Yeah. Yeah, this one was pretty pretty appealing. Joe, what did you think of this one? Did you have any thoughts or initial reactions when you checked out this deal? Oh, I liked it. Uh, all, you know, all the indicators are positive. Uh, I just haven't personally been to that market, so I'm a little bit leery, whereas I have been to the Florida markets, so that's why. I will say that this one, oh, Madison says I'm echoing. Sorry, I am going to. I. Great, Rebecca, you might try muting yourself while she talks. I, I don't know. No, if it's I think it was me. I I can't see the webcams because I'm showing the presentation for my computer, so I had them on my phone, but I turned that off, so it was indeed me. Um, I will say this was the one I was vacillating between. Um, this one and the one I ended up choosing, Grant and I were talking about it at um, at our staff retreat last weekend in San Antonio. And as he chose a rehabbed property, I chose a rehabbed property. It's always 
it's not always apples to apples, but it is interesting to kind of run through, you know, the similarities versus the differences. Um, I also liked this one. And same idea, there were concerns with mine. I reached out to the team um, and and just asked them directly about, well, what, what about this? What do you think about this? Um, so I love Grant's feedback because this was also one of, um, my questions with this one was the neighborhood. Um, so to reach out to the team, find out what they're actually seeing, um, and even better in this case, what they're doing to kind of um, keep the neighborhood moving forward. Yeah, good. I was surprised to see that you get a you can get an A minus in outdoor activities, but a C plus in health and fitness. Like I don't know what's happening there. <laughs> Listen, you can have the opportunities. It doesn't mean you, you're going to take them. Uh, too much Southern food. That's it. <laughs> right, chicken. All right. Awesome. awesome research from you guys. Great job. Okay. Uh, I think I'm next. Um, so a little bit of context from my vantage point. I began investing in 2010, really not with a whole lot of intention, uh, honestly. It wasn't until 2017 that I really started being aggressive and intentional about acquiring property and acquiring property in markets that I hadn't been to. Um, and I really got my start focusing on high cash flow markets uh, and cheap properties because I thought that was how I quit, quit my job sooner. I was working a job I didn't like at the time and this was the recipe, right? Buy 40 cash flowing properties and quit your job, right? Um, however, over time, and as I have monitored the performance of some of those initial purchases, my approach has kind of evolved. Um, so I feel like I'm finally kind of getting in the flow of what my preferences are and what I'm looking for. Um, I am fortunate, fortunate now to be in a job I don't hate. So I, I, replacing myself as soon as possible is no longer the top priority, though just like anybody, I'd like to be job optional as soon as possible. But I really try to focus on 10 to 15 year growth potential over cash flow. Um, and because I have some of those good cash flowing deals as a good foundation, you know, I can go and buy the properties that maybe have a little bit tighter cash flow initially when I purchase them. Um, I've really been focusing on refining my portfolio, focusing on quality over quantity. Um, I've talked to lots of investors. You start getting a bunch of doors and you realize that you start losing your sanity. Um, and I've started feeling like maintenance costs are almost more of a price per door than they are a percentage of rent. So um, I've tried to kind of shift to newer homes in nicer areas, higher priced homes um, where I can get higher gross rents. Um, these are just some of my preferences now as I kind of refine and we've slowly kind of started selling some of our some of our cheaper properties and trading them out, you know, selling two of them and trading them out for one nicer um, property. Um, I also really like using great long-term debt. So I am definitely swayed by these interest rate buy-down programs. Um, and I like diversification. I don't want to all, I don't want to be all in one place geographically. Um, I also don't want to be all in single family. I want to diversify a little bit into some multifamily, though I am a little more heavily in single family than multifamily. So that's a little bit about my kind of buy box or my preference. There we go. Okay, so this is the one I chose. Um, this is a new construction duplex from our San Antonio team. Um, the purchase price of this is just under two, or excuse me, 650. The estimated monthly rental income is 4,498. Um, so each side of these duplexes are three bedrooms, two and a half bath. Actually, when we were in San Antonio this past weekend, we visited this location. So I got a little bit of an unfair advantage, I feel like, to see this in person. Um, and another unfair advantage, I lived in this area. So I was very familiar with what was happening on this side of town. Um, some of the compelling things about the deal that the team sent, um, they're offering a 4.25% interest rate buy down. Because it's new construction, they are offering a uh, 210 builder warranty. So I like that it comes with a with a warranty. 
It's located in a really prime location right off a major highway, I-10, um, and it's north of 1604. This is a very high-end side of the town, um, very desirable area. I tell people, if you were gonna move your family to San Antonio, you'd probably live on this side of town. This is the side of town that, that I lived in <laughs> when we lived over here as well. Um, it's only 15 minutes from USAA's headquarters, which I believe has over 35,000 employees. Um, UT San Antonio main campus is right there just south of 1604, and uh, San Antonio's medical corridor are all right there within that 15 minute commute. And it's only 35 minutes to downtown. My husband used to commute into downtown every day, and it was 35 minutes um, to get there. Um, and then this is in a really desirable school district. Bernie schools are some of the best school districts in the area. And then I went and plopped some logos on this map just so you can kind of understand the side of town that we're on. Um, I don't know how many people have brand recognition of this shield here, but that is a Lamborghini dealership. Actually, the most expensive <laughs> Lamborghini dealership in the nation was just opened on the other side of the highway from this development. Um, this little blue dot here is where the duplex is. Um, obviously, Chick-fil-A nearby, that's always a good sign of growth. There's a Ferrari dealership right here. So this tells you the type of people that are living on this side of town, um, that there would be a Lamborghini and a Ferrari dealership so close. Um, Six Flags of Texas is right here. Um, and then a major shopping center uh, right here in this corner that has a Bass Pro, a Lowe's, a Target, all the big you know retail that you want. So. Um, this is a really prime location. I'm very excited about this particular area. And if anyone and does did just visit it, yes, groceries. Yeah. <laughs> yes, H E B is like the pinnacle grocery store in Texas, and it's very quickly taking over in every major um, MSA in Texas. But they just opened a brand new one as an anchor store, uh, literally around the block from this particular development. So lots of growth happening here. Again, we had an unfair advantage. We were just here putting our eyes on this. So it's, <laughs> we know a little more about this specific neighborhood than maybe we usually do. But I'm, we're tipping you off here. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the numbers on this one. Okay, so here is the purchase analysis. So again, this team is buying down the full interest rate. It is a 10-1 arm, so it is fixed for the first 10. It's a 30-year amortized loan, fixed for the first 10 years, and then it can adjust one time per year after year 10 at 4.25%, which I thought was awesome until I saw Joe's interest rate um, <laughs> at 3.75. 4.25 is still pretty awesome. Um, so you can see the numbers here. The downside of this deal is that it's expensive, right? So this is a big investment, 181,000 cash out of pocket to get into a deal like this. This is this is a, a costly deal. So I can definitely see that this might be beyond some people's comfort level for their very first deal in a new market, or maybe their very first deal out of state. Um, that is probably the one downside to a deal like this is that it is costly. Um, but the flip side of that is that it does command very high gross rents. And I'll show you some of the due diligence I did on, on verifying the rent estimates here. I think they're, I think they're very accurate, just over $2,200 per side. I think that's realistic. Um, here are some of the estimates. This team estimates the taxes of what they will be since this is new construction. So these are not, this is not based on land value only. This is what they will be um, as it's as it's completed. Um, this one does have a small HOA because this is a build to rent community, meaning they're developing the whole street. They call it they call it the row. It's just a little street of of um, properties, and um, they're all going to be rentals. So an HOA will help maintain the quality of the neighborhood and make sure that um, it stays looking good. Uh, let's see, property management at 6%. So your annual cash flow on this is $859 a month, which I think is pretty awesome. The cash on cash return in year one is just shy of 6%, which honestly, by my measure for a growth market in an, what I think is an A-class area, this one stands out big time to me. Um, let's see what else about this do I like. Um, again, I really like just the size of this investment because you can see by year five, you know, the total equity that you're looking at um, after controlling this asset. This is this is a life changing amount of capital. Right. Um, so I love the idea of thinking 10, 15 years down the road, how much net worth I've created for myself by controlling an asset like this. 
Okay, so here are some of my highlights from due diligence. Okay, so I pulled the same resource as Grant and Rebecca. I use niche.com. Um, I threw in Fair Oaks Ranch because that's kind of more specifically the part of Bernie that this development is in. Um, again, this is a very high end part of town. Um, it is a prime school district, Bernie ISD. If you Google it, you see the rating there, A plus for the schools. This is a very sought, off, sought after school district. People who are relocating to the San Antonio Metro choose to go to Bernie for the schools. Um, and what I like about this is that you, you're you on, when we lived there, we called it barely Bernie because you're on the far south side of Bernie. Um, so you get the Bernie schools, you get the Bernie address, but you are closer to San Antonio where you work and maybe where you enjoy more nightlife and stuff. Um, so I love that the school districts were so desirable. Um, the median household income shocked me. I mean, this is a very affluent area. Uh, when I put in Bernie's median household income, it did go down to 89,000, but still, still above the median national um, household income. So very strong wages in this area. Um, yeah, again, this is an A-class A class area prime. Let's see, the 4.25% interest rate. This is another one of my big driving factors. I really wanna look at effective debt and holding that debt long-term. I compared, I made a two performa side by side. So I looked at if I had a 4.25% interest rate and I compared it to a 6.125 interest rate, which is what I would get if I were just doing a regular loan. Um, I looked at the difference and I have $22,000 more in principal pay down after holding it for 10 years. Um, and it increases the cash flow $550 a month. So you can see this is a deal that probably wouldn't be that interesting if it didn't have that interest rate buy down program. So it is a big compelling factor about this deal. Um, love this next point um, because again, I'm thinking about controlling assets that grow my net worth in such a way and, and um, have create this nest egg for me that I can use in, re in retirement. So after a 10 year hold, if I sell this property, so I subtract the 6% closing cost, the total profit that I will have earned both in principal pay down and in the cumulative cash flow will be $718,000, um, which I love to think again, like this is, this is like having another, you know, a, a $70,000 income, you know, for each of those years that's going totally towards a retirement plan. Um, so love that. Um, let's see, this is a smaller build to rent neighborhood. Uh, some of the build to rent communities are a little bit large. There might be 40 or 50, uh, you know, duplexes or quadplexes side by side. I own another quadplex in a build to rent community and I think there are 40 quads um, there. So it's a lot and, and there's competition and some pros and cons to that for sure. But I, I liked that this one was just kind of one strip of duplexes and I think they have a, they have a couple of triplexes as well. Um, it was in a nice country setting, very close to the city, but like you drove off on kind of this quiet road and the backs of the lots all overlooked farmland, which was very nice, beautiful oak trees. Um, I threw in a caveat here. There are some additional risks with build to rent neighborhoods that you've got to be kind of mindful of. One being stabilization of a neighborhood like this. If a bunch of these close around the same time, you know, I could have longer periods of vacancy and this is a relatively large mortgage. Um, so you have to kind of go into a deal like this, kind of preparing to have some upfront costs as the, as the community leases up, which I think it will without issues. And then I cheated and threw in one extra slide, guys. I just couldn't fit it all. <laughs> How dare you? Uh, <laughs> we were told three slides. <laughs> I, I know I made the rules and then I broke them. It's not fair. I'm so sorry. Um, I did a quick like Zillow search of this area just to kind of show you like home values and rent prices. So on the left here you see, and Zillow is not like, this is not a hard science. Again, it's just quick due diligence to try to get a feel for an area, but this shows you the quality of single family homes in the area. So these are new construction neighborhoods that are just past the development. The development is here on the left side of the road and you see all these single family homes. Many of them are four bedrooms, but they're, they're you know, close to 600,000 and up um, to get into this neighborhood. So, and this shows you that there's like no rentals over here. This is, this is a, again, an area that's very desirable for its great schools, but there's not a lot of rental properties there. Um, so I feel like this offers a really unique 
um, opportunity to kind of meet a need in an area that's very desirable, but where maybe people who don't have that super high income <laughs> and who can't afford those $600,000 homes, they want to rent at a lower price. Um, so I also, like Grant and Rebecca, threw mine into RentCast. These are the average rents for the area. I like the way they break it down and show you like a one-bedroom average, the two-bedroom, three-bedroom, and four-bedroom average. Um, so you can see the rent cast projection was 2,600. If you recall, the performa was around 2,200 per side. So this average, I think, doesn't account for the fact that these are side-by-side -side duplexes. They're kind of more townhome style duplexes. So I don't think you'll get 2,600. Um, but I definitely think 2,200 is realistic based on my research and my, my knowledge of the area. So this was my pick. <laughs> Good one. I like how you... Um added the income of the area and even talked about like the Bernie area because I calculated it out at three times the monthly rent somebody would have to be making eighty six thousand dollars at the you know the twenty four hundred dollars a month so I like how you pointed that out that hey they, these people can't afford that rent you know it's not out of people's realm I mean you know twenty four hundred dollars a month is not a little bit amount right it's a decent amount right. you have to Right. Let's make sure that the rent, the tenant hasn't gone and bought a Ferrari down the street or a Lamborghini down the street before they, well, <laughs> before they, make, they pay their rent. If they make a hundred, if they make one hundred fifty thousand a year, maybe they could afford both. <laughs> <laughs> the Ferrari in the driveway. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. All right. Last but not least, Celia, tell us about your okay. investment preference. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'm so excited to be here. As Leah said, I'm usually on the back end. Um, I've been our webinar manager and marketing manager for five or six years. So I, I did quick, you know, back of the envelope math. I think I've watched between 250 and 300 webinars produce them. So I, I've learned a lot. I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of performance, learned about a lot of markets. Um, my husband and I just started our out of state investing um just shy of two years uh it actually in southwest florida north of of where joe was talking port charlotte we're actually in newport ritchie um and i'm so happy to say that that is going well two years later it is true no news is good news typically with your properties so that has been um a testament for us in terms of that was our first time investing with a real wealth team or a team that we work with and um so far that has been a fantastic experience so um i am on the newer side of investing um and with four kids as you might imagine um we don't have a whole lot of discretionary income so my price point is typically a little bit on the lower end um and we're still looking to scale and i have found even with the couple we've um gotten into that scaling does happen quite a bit faster right when you're getting into the first and then the second it does start to feel as if it's going to be growing exponentially um so the one i picked was um from our the indianapolis property team that we work with um and i love this one for the price point obviously this one all in i believe is just under 50. Um, so it's really accessible, I think, for the average investor, whether you're trying to scale in terms of growth or um, in buying multiple properties or just getting into your first one. Um, Anderson is also, I know, a favorite of a favorite suburb of Indy um, by the property team. So I was talking with the team about it. And actually, while this webinar was happening, I had reached out to them and I said, any idea how long it's going to take to get this one um, rented? And he said, actually, tenants moved in today. So um, let, as Joe mentioned earlier, one of the tricky parts of this is one of the best times of year to buy. However, we're, we're leaning into the time where it's not always the best time to get a tenant in. So anytime you can find something that just leased up um, around the holidays is the better obviously um so i know that in this one i think i talk about it in one of the further slides um it's gone through rehab rehab is totally complete um they do have tile throughout the house 
I want to put a disclosure um, or a disclaimer, uh, pardon me, on this one. So unlike the new construction, you know, you are going to get more character in a rehabbed property. Um, and I feel like that's something that we should be afraid of, right? Um, so in talking to the team, um, there are some tile choices in this one that perhaps I wouldn't have made, but in talking to the team, they said that um, cost effective methods were not to pull all the tile out, start over. Um, it's in good shape. It will rent really well. What I liked about this and Google Street Maps, um, Google Street View, is that it's just a cute little neighborhood street where most of the houses kind of look like this. There were no like sore thumbs sticking out. Um, Leah actually pointed out to me that this backs up to um, a school. And I will show, let's see if you can see my mouse, that um, there's also, they're right next to the golf course. Um, one of the country clubs in Anderson is a block or two away. There's a hospital a couple blocks away. So it really, you know, speaks to the importance of understanding the neighborhood that you're in, which is one thing I really like about rehabbed homes is I feel like you do get a really good sense of the area and what you're getting into. Um, so as I said, purchase price 176 with the rehab already being completed. Um, and having the other teams talking about their lower interest rates, um, I will say the property that uh, we closed on just shy of two years ago in Florida, our interest rate is 6.3, I think, and we're still cash flowing handily. Um, so don't let the interest rate scare you. Um, as I've heard Joe say before, um, do the math. If the numbers work out in this one, we're showing, you know, an estimated cash flow return of $456 a month. So yes, the cash flow would be better if I was at a 4.5. However, I'm not really going to be too upset about $450 in monthly cash flow. So um, don't let that freak you out. And I also particularly love the cash on cash return here of 11% in year one, and then slowly climbing as we go. The other thing I like about this market is um, it's uh, our team. Um, he always talks about we're a boring market. We're slow and steady. Nothing exciting happens here. And that's good. Um, so I will say my Florida property, I have not been able to increase rent in almost two years um, because the market has softened somewhat. Um, I don't find that that is necessarily happening in these linear markets where they're just slower. They're not feeling those huge surges. And then um, the I don't think there have been huge depressions, but just the recorrecting a little bit. So I do like this linear market for that reason. Um, the, Seller um, concessions, I wanted to point out on this slide was 12 months of free property management. So obviously that is adding to that excellent cash flow. And then 2% seller credit that you can use however you want. If you just want to put it towards closing costs, if you want to buy down that rate even more, which will help your cash flow, you know, up front. And then when the property management kicks back in, um, Sorry, I'm going to go back. So property management will be in the future 10% of your monthly um, rent. So you want to fic, fic, factor, factor that in um, as you're looking ahead, which we've done in our pro formas. Um, the other thing I love about this um, opportunity is the team that it comes from. Um, as I said, I've been with Real Wealth about six years, and this team has longer longevity with real wealth than I do. They've been around for a long time. Um, one thing I wrote down that Leo was talking about was um, conflict, conflict resolution. Um, we meet together every week and when conflicts arise as they will, no investment opportunity is without risk. What is telling to me is how a team reacts to conflict 
or problems that come up. And this team has always impressed me in terms of their ability to work with investors, their communication with us. Um, so this is a property I would buy today if I had the funds to do it, um, especially because you just got a tenant in there. So, oh, sorry, I advanced. But anyhow, this this was my choice. This to me was a solid um, conservative risk. And that's and that's where I am right now in my portfolio growing season. I love this one too, Celia. This one was another one that tempted me um, when I got scared of the the Chattanooga one. This was kind of the next one. I was like, oh man, that cash flow. Um, I, I think it's a really good choice. Oh, there was one other point I was going to make about this. What was it? Ah, shoot. Well, I have one. Uh, the uh, the cash flow is really good at four hundred and fifty dollars a month, but that's at the six percent interest rate. If rates come down, you could always refinance bring it down right. to four percent or whatever and then it'll cash flow even more so right right out of the gate to get 450 a month is pretty good yeah okay i remember, I remember the point um they had this one listed for rent higher than the performa um i think they had it listed at like 1425 or something on the market mm. and so the fact that he said he just had a lease or they just moved in makes me wonder if they got a little bit more than what the performa said so it might be that this one cash flows even oh. better Oh, Interesting. Be... Text yeah, him and follow up. Yeah. <laughs> They've been known to put conservative rents on the pro formas, which is nice. Yeah. But then you get pleasantly surprised. It's yeah. more. And we have we can vouch that our rents in the Indianapolis market have been going up steadily and just keeps remaining steady. Yeah. So but something to look at look into. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. This was Super fun. I'm already thinking we have to do this more often. I think it's so, it, I love hearing everybody's different perspectives um, and just different points that we all take from looking at the same deals. So as I mentioned at the top of the hour, all the deals that were featured today, the four that we highlighted, the four that we cherry picked, they're available, but there are six others. Um, so again, all 10 deals are available if you scan this QR code. Uh, no, sh no shade to the ones that weren't chosen. Again, we all kind of have some biases that we lean in and out of at various phases of our investing journey. All 10 are excellent. All 10 do have things that are special and compelling about them. So scan that QR code to see all of them. We've tried to make it very easy for you to click a button um, to connect with the team. Um, some of these will go fast, guys. I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's just the truth of this. So if you're watching this live, there's there was quite a few of you registered, over 400 registrants for this webinar. Um, so if there's one here that you like loved, don't wait until tomorrow to reach out to the team, reach out to them today. Um, and yeah, and, and here's the other good news. If this one that was featured is gone, these teams have a steady pipeline. So they're always having deals that are very similar to these. Um, but if you're under the gun to, to pick one before the end of the year, one of these could be a great choice. And I wanted to mention really quickly, just the, the markets, the other six markets, there was Birmingham, new construction, single family, um, Columbus, Georgia, that's on this landing page that you'll go to. Columbus, Georgia, um, Dallas, North Texas area, Cleveland, Ohio, another Southwest Florida property. And a Charlotte. Charlotte, yeah. Yes, yes, and a Charlotte. So a lot of, a good mix of multifamily, single, new construction, rehab, turnkey. So a lot to look at. Awesome. So if you are excited by this, but feeling not quite ready to take next steps, or maybe you want to be in the position next year where you're ready to jump on a deal like this, I want to remind you of all the great benefits that we have for you here at Real Wealth. Obviously, it's free to be a member. You get access to our great resource library. Um, you get access to our great uh, webinar replays like this one on the Realty Portal. So if you haven't been on the Realty Portal lately and clicked around and looked at some of the education content that's there, please, please do so. Um, also, we want to connect with you and have these types of conversations one-on-one -on -one to learn about your preferences and help kind of steer you in the right direction. Joe and myself 
our investment counselors, um, you are automatically assigned to one of us. Um, and so we're happy to kind of guide you through the same kind of logic that we talked through today and, and can make any introductions that you need, whether directly to a team, to a lender, to a CPA, an attorney, a 1031 exchange facilitator, you name it, we're really well connected um, and we can get you pointed in the right direction. Okay, we have some questions. I know we're over the hour, but because there's so many people on, let's jump to some of these. Um, okay, this is a good question from Robin. And we'll direct this one to Grant and Rebecca since you guys chose a rehabbed home and you have a bunch of rehab homes in your portfolio. On a rehabbed home, do you recommend purchasing a home warranty? If so, do you have any recommended companies? I think that there are pros and cons and we, I think a home warranty is definitely something good to look at, but talk to the team. Some of them teams offer warranties on the work that they had done. And if you don't choose the warranty, then you would just set aside funds down the road for when the things need to be replaced. This is just the longer term vision. Um, that's, I feel like there is definitely some benefit to it, but it's not a slam dunk. So for us, we've not necessarily always done the warranty, but I, I do think there's some benefit there if it concerns you at all about anything down the road. And they're not very expensive. Yeah. I found that it varies a lot by market. I've seen some property managers recommend them because they work really well. And I've seen other property managers who told, told me to avoid them like the plague, because when you do have a problem, they'll never fix anything or it'll take too long to get a guy out there to look at your problem. So uh, depending on the market and which company you go with, uh, it could vary wildly. So talk to the property management company and see what they recommend. I would agree with that. It does take a, lot, a while sometimes to get people out there. And if, if it takes a long time and if it's something that needs to be done and you have a tenant in there, you have to think about tenant quality. That's on the team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're looking for a, we're looking for a national home warranty company that kind of meets a lot of the needs. So behind the scenes, real wealth, we're trying to find a home warranty company that we can recommend confidently and, and connect you guys with. So stay tuned. Hopefully we'll have one soon. Um, okay, there's a couple questions about wanting to know like who the builder is or details on the teams. Uh, Got to get that information from the portal. So go, so click on that QR code there. It'll route you to the correct um, contact information. Um, but we work with lots of different builders in each of these areas. We'll we'll get you connected there on that landing page. Uh, and David, yes, the slides are going to be available. We're recording this webinar. We'll get it up on the Realty Portal um, by tomorrow. Okay, here's a good question for from David. Um, Joe, why don't you take this one? What measure do you use for affordability? Well, uh, affordability ultimately it's about the is the is it let, uh, inexpensive enough so that the rents will cover the uh, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, and property management. So in really high price markets like New York or San Francisco, that's not even close. So uh, 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 if, if the property's rent can, can can command a rent that can cover those expenses, then it's in the ballpark. And we we also want to see a property that's in the middle. We don't want a McMansion that's at the higher end in a given market that's going to cost a lot because when times are bad, those are hard to rent. We want something a middle of the road uh, bread and butter properties, and that varies from uh, market to market, but uh, something in the middle, two hundred fifty thousand, something like that, three hundred fifty. Mm -hmm. Grant mentioned a calculation that I love to do, um, and that is looking at three times the rental income. Because when when someone applies to rent the property, property manager, a good property manager is going to want the tenant to earn at least three times the rent amount. Um, so what I like to do is kind of reverse calculate the wages of my tenant, right? What is the rental amount? What is three times that? And then I go compare that to the median wages for the area, and that tells you, I think, affordability, like average wages, average you know, price point or what they can afford. So that's a measure I love to, I love to calculate. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. These questions are from Karen uh, about the Florida properties. Um, do they have a 30 year conventional uh, rate option? Uh, yes, so they do. Um, I believe 
that they do, it is going to be a little bit different interest rate. I believe they yeah. offer one you can do 30 years, but it's it is going to be a little bit higher interest rate, which is, I mean, if if that makes you feel more comfortable that you have a locked in rate. Um, but remember, you, if you don't hold on to it till for 10 years, like most a lot of people do, then you'll never hit that 10 year um, payment prepayment or the 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 change in the interest rate. Um, or if you refinance it before then as well. So you do have some and options. I believe they're still doing the rate buy down for the yep. 30 year, but so the rates are higher as Grant said, but not six is higher, just a little bit higher than the 10, six arm. Honestly, that team has some of the most flexible, I feel like terms with their interest rate buy down program. They do require that you they share do. some cost with a builder um but like if you want a 30-year fixed if you want a 10-1 arm like if you know they, they even have some dscr options that they have a rate buy down program so if you can't qualify for conventional financing they have a foreign investor uh loan as well so they have there, there's definitely some choices to be made there depending on your your need for a loan they have a, a flyer with about 10 different options depending on who you are yep Okay, this question is for Celia. What is the lease term for the Indianapolis property? The lease term, I believe it is a year. And it just started. <laughs> That's okay. been over a year. Yeah. Yep. I hope they put it on an 18 month, you know? Like when you get when you get those uh renters in right at the holidays, you always want to try to push them to get on that summer cycle again if you can. They might do, they might have done an 18 month just to get it to, cause I've talked to them before about things like that. And they, they know that November time is not necessarily yes. the out. So they may have done it 18 month. I'm going to text I, him right now. Let's see how fast he is. <laughs> but you're right. Oftentimes they will do that when they're getting a tenant in around the holidays, they will try and push it a little further just to avoid having the same yeah. The same song and dance every year around the holidays. Yeah. And one other thing, uh, when you have a uh, when 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 you have a duplex like the ones we saw in Texas, there, uh, it's good to stagger the leases so they don't expire at the same time, and you'll have two vacancies at the same time. So you might have one that's uh, you might have a 12 month lease, and the other one might have an 18 month lease, just to spread it around, so you don't have that risk. Okay, I'll take this next one from Karen. She says, for the Bernie rental, would the triplex be recommended? Uh, what is the downside of a duplex versus a triplex versus a single family? So this tells me that Karen is already connected with this team, so she knows that there's a couple triplexes on this street as well. Actually, I texted Lexi um, a little bit earlier too um, about this particular deal, and she told me they had one duplex left and one triplex left in this development. They sold, there was three when we were all there this weekend, but two of the people that were on the tour bought them. Um, so there's one left. Um, I don't think there's a, a downside really between the triplex and the duplex other than the price, right? I mean, it's, it's another unit, so it is a little bit more expensive. Um, the downside might be that your center unit has a unit on each side, so perhaps that's less desirable to a tenant, right? Everybody likes an end unit because you don't share a wall on either side, so maybe there's a little more vacancy time on that center unit, but not necessarily. Um, I think what you should be considering about, like I mentioned, I like the diversification of single family and multifamily. I think it's good to do a little of both. I'm a little heavier in the single family space because I think it's more liquid. You have more options when it comes to time to sell that property. Statistically, when you go to sell a single family, you're probably selling it to an owner occupant, a retail home buyer, and they're going to get emotional about it and you know be less concerned about things like interest rates and maybe certain maintenance items because they're going to come in and make this their home. Whereas a multifamily property, when you go to sell it, you're probably selling it to another investors and investors are generally stingy, right? And they want a deal and they want interest rates need to be favorable. Like they're, they're concerned about the numbers. So you might be a little more locked in um, to timing of when you could sell a multifamily versus a single family. So just something to consider though in an area like this, my thought is that there will be more people who might want to buy this duplex to live in one side and rent out the other because it is a very desirable a desirable part of town. Okay, um, 
Karen asked a question about Florida. Joe, do those uh, new construction homes have impact windows or accordion shutters? I believe they're impact windows, but uh, when you're talking to the local property team, you should confirm that. And they do usually come, all the new construction in Florida usually come with storm shutters. I know all of mine that I've bought do, they come with you know metal and they have the screws already pre-installed outside of the window. So anytime a hurricane is coming, your property manager is telling your tenant, put the storm shutters on and they go and get them the, out of the garage and put them up. The property manager will come out. Say that again, Grant? If the tenant can't do it, the property manager will come out. All right. Uh, FJ, the link to the deals is right there. Scan that QR code and that will take you to the landing page where you can see all of the inventory and then there's a button under each deal to get in contact with the team. I'm going to add today too. I'm going to add a banner at the top just in case if you log in, you'll see it at the top. Go to our year-end property showdown landing page. Oh, we should send it out in the email too. <laughs> and you'll get a follow-up email yep in about an hour that'll come from us and that'll have the link in it as well yep and then see, you can get all the team's information there this is all the behind the scenes stuff people don't know Celia does as soon as we get off the webinar everyone thinks it's done but then Celia's real job starts of getting everything <laughs> uploaded and edited and and getting the emails out to you so, um, um, we'll make sure this is accessible to you guys um, uh, let's see. And there's a, there's a couple of great comments on here, and I, and I totally agree. Everyone really enjoyed hearing like our thought processes on choosing a property. Um, for those of you who are new, you know, and you haven't had the chance to kind of hear people talk through their due diligence, I'm so glad this was helpful. We'll definitely do this again. Um, last and question. I will say for anyone who has not had a strategy session, um, how infinitely helpful they are. In fact, in the last couple of months, I've contacted both Leah and Joe to kind of pick their brain about things. So if you haven't had a strategy session, or if you have, um, feel free to schedule another one. It's, they're free, they're supremely helpful, um, and they can help walk you through some of these questions on different markets, advantages, disadvantages, different property, property types. So definitely log into the Realty Portal and schedule a strategy session. We can Thanks. save you a lot of time too, instead of floundering around on the website with 900 webinars and 15 teams. <laughs> we can just focus you where, where you need to be looking. Right. I have Thanks. one more thing I wanted to add, I just remembered. All the Go. due diligence, all the strategy sessions, you want to do it all. But then in the end, don't let yourself get overwhelmed. Just pick one and go. After you do all that great stuff, just go with your gut and move forward. Don't get stuck. That I just really wanted to like emphasize that's really important. Take that step. Don't let yourself get caught up and it's a year later and then there's nothing. So just do all the stuff and then go for it. Had to add that in. <laughs> it's so good. The proof of concept home is the hardest one, right? And Celia's shaking her head because she deliberated quite a while. Obviously, she has a lot of exposure to all the opportunities that are out there and can get stuck in that analysis paralysis like the rest of us. Um, but once you get into that first deal, you realize, oh, okay, like it's not rocket science. It doesn't have to be rocket science. Uh, you can make some mistakes and it still work out okay. Um, but you're better. Like, by, by the second one, by the third one, like now you're starting to refine. I mean, even my story is I went real hard into a asset class that I kind of don't like anymore and it's okay, to, but I was able to kind of pivot and readjust, but those first proof of concept homes got me there. Well, and it also, not only the experience, but also you had to start somewhere, right? So if we all could start buying new construction at 250, 500,000 and have a cash flow and have it all, we would, but at some point you just have to start somewhere and then you build from there. Right, super well said. Guys, this was fun. We'll definitely uh, have to do this again. Um, keep an eye on your emails. We'll get this replay sent out tomorrow. We'll get it up on the portal. Thanks so much for joining us. And yeah, we'll see you back here next Thursday for another webinar. Awesome. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye.